Amen. Speaking of that, let me get you to the book of Judges, chapter number six. Hopefully you have already read this material. Hopefully you read on into chapter seven. You might even felt a little bit uh, curious enough to read into chapter eight. Uh, maybe you felt spunky enough to move into nine. But we hope that you read at least chapter number six. That's going to be where I'm going to focus my attention for the message for today. The Bible teaches, as you have already heard, for whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, Amen. that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I can't think of a better place to start when we think about this Old Testament text. Let me just read a few of these words in Judges 6 to set the stage. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Yes. Yes. Because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, mm -hmm. and the strongholds uh -huh. which are in the mountains. Uh -huh. So it was, whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up. All right. Also Amalekites mm -hmm. and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza uh -huh. and leave no sustenance right. for Israel, wow. neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, yeah. come in as numerous as locusts, mm -hmm. both they and their camels were without number. And they would enter the land to destroy it. All right. So Israel was greatly impoverished mm -hmm. because of the Midianites. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Uh -huh. The history and information of the Old Testament provides a rich source of spiritual nourishment for us. Uh -huh. In its pages, we gain tremendous insights into the nature of God as we observe how he dealt with his old covenant people. Right. When we look back at these individuals, when we look at the nation, we find timeless principles yes. that help guide us in our walk with the Lord. Yes. And these serve as a, a means of encouragement. Right. A means of admonition and even a means of motivation yeah. to faithfulness. Right. This morning, as we look in this text of scripture, we're looking at one of God's great servants. Uh -huh. No, he didn't have the faith of Abraham. Right. No, he certainly didn't have the courage of of Joshua. Right. Uh -huh. No, he was not one that had the miraculous experiences of Moses. Uh -huh. yeah. And yet he is a powerful yes, servant yes, in what God wanted to do yeah. through his wayward people. Uh -huh. The man we're talking about is Gideon. Yes, sir. Right. I want to navigate his life use as a subject simply the story of Gideon. Okay. Now the setting of this historical account takes place after Joshua is gone. Uh -huh. Joshua had led the people after Moses led the people. All right. All right. Moses suffered with them for 40 years in the wilderness. Yes, sir. And he died and couldn't get into the promised land. No, uh -huh. Joshua took his place and Joshua boldly led the people and when he was nearing the end of his days, he said, you do what you want to do. You got to make your choice. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
And after Joshua went off the scene, the, the 12 tribes uh, entered into a very weird state. Uh, they began as they moved into the promised land uh, to struggle with unfaithfulness. It was their unfaithfulness that it caused them mixed results. God said, I give you the land. I, I give it to you. I own it. I know Canaanites are there. But who do you think made them? I know it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Who do you think made that possible? I'm giving it to you. You didn't earn it. But I'm giving it to you if you would obey my voice. The land will be yours. And the people heard part of what God said. Something about you and me. We have a convenient way of blocking out certain things God says and only getting the part we like. It's like children who are eating something, some of which is distasteful. And they select the good stuff to them and they hide the rest of it. And when you look at Israel, they go about picking and choosing how and what to do for the Lord. And as a result of that, now they are in a situation where they're in trouble. Yeah. I want to open this first series of lessons for us by thinking about the condition of the people. And I want to stress to us that disunity and disobedience invites defenselessness. All right. Think about the people in this sad state. Here they are, the Midianites and the Amalekites are marauding clans. And they come upon the territory that Israel was occupying and they basically bogart. They get to the point where they continue to force Israel to hiding. And as a result of that, they finally and violently dominate Israel and chase Israel into dens and in the caves. Yeah. Here you're supposed to enjoy all this promised land, but you're hiding in holes in the mountain, uh -huh. hiding in corners in the mountain, and you can't even have peace of mind because this army is coming at you all the time and taking away all of God's blessings. All right, all right. Bible says this happened for seven long years. And as a result of that, Israel began to cry out to the Lord. Why, Lord, how were they in that situation? Because they had been disobedient. They had obeyed the Lord. Right. They would have never been under the power of the Midianites. If they had obeyed the Lord, they would have never been under the power of the Amalekites. But not only that, if they had obeyed the Lord, they'd be standing together as one powerful nation. But because of their disobedience and their divisiveness, their being fractured, they left themselves defenseless. And I want to let us know something today. Whenever disobedience and divisiveness exist among God's people, that people is heading for disaster. Oh, yeah. That people will not be able to withstand satanic attack. Oh, yeah. Israel, hiding in its dens and in its caves, could not see herself getting out from that. She couldn't reach over to her various tribes and unite as one man and fight the enemy. No, because of her disobedience and her fractured state, she couldn't do anything but duck and hide. This concept is seen in our world well, the Lord lets us know that his people must be obedient and they must be united. Yeah. I will go on to say when they are obedient, they will be united. Amen. When God's people are obedient, they will be united. Why is this so important, uh, such an important lesson for you and I to grasp from the story of Gideon? It is because God tells us in principle and in precept that when we are disobedient and when we are uh, divisive, we can't stand together. That's right. That's right. This is seen in our country. Look at this concept in our country. Yeah. Our country today is seeing chaotic times, yeah. turbulent times, yeah. tense 
times. It's being experienced in a very a variety of areas. We got racial tension. If you've been watching the news, you know that just yesterday, <laughs> 10 lives were taken at a supermarket. If you've been watching the news, you know that that crime was racially motivated. Yeah. If you've been watching the news, you know that not too long ago, a few days before, there was more shooting in Milwaukee. Yeah. You've been watching the news, you know that this type of thing is happening all over. Some of us thought all this racial tension is over. It's never been over. It's been hiding and laying right below the surface. And all you need to do is get some hate mongers to bring it up and it comes out in full force. This country in all this time haven't even been 300 years old and we still can't get together that the person's skin does not make the person. That's right. That's right. We're still hating. Yep. We're still killing. Uh -huh. We can't get together. It's amazing that the Bible says God made from one blood all nations of the world to dwell on the earth. Amen. And here we still let skin tune yep. break us apart yep. and to bring about hatred yep. and tension. And the reason we're becoming so vulnerable in this country to the power of other countries is we still don't see ourselves as one nation under God. We see ourselves as segments under God. But as Jesus teaches us, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Oh yes, whenever a people is disobedient to God and dis divisive, you find disaster coming. Yeah. Yeah. Look at our country again. We're having problems with gender redefinition. Yeah. Country getting divided over that. Our poor young people, I feel so sorry for them. They're getting caught in the twisting winds of a, mor a, 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 a moral revolution. A gender ref, a red redefinition revolution. Uh, you and I were in our 60s and 70s weren't fighting our own battles. It's a different battle today. Yep, yep. It's a different battle today. And the word of God gets twisted by people. And the view of God gets twisted by people. Because we can't seem to understand that God made male and female to be together in that type of union. And God God did not tell us to redefine ourselves. But our world is twisted. And we're getting caught up in the twist. And we're having debates now over something we never had to debate about before. You never had to go to the hospital and check in and determine what your gender was. You didn't mark unknown or signed and yet that's where our world is this is just a part of the deception taking place and dividing our society and we find once again whenever a people is divided disaster is soon to come we see this with Roe v. Wade you've been watching the news lately you know there's a lot of mess going on over Roe v. Wade you know that women are protesting and men are protesting on both sides of the equation. And I tell you, I'm not a prophet, but I can see what you can see. We are heading for a disaster. Oh, whenever a people is disobedient and divided, we invite disaster. November's around the corner. You can't help if you're watching television or listening to the radio or watching any other kind of media, but see the division that's coming up even more when it comes to who will run the country. Yeah. Will it be one party? Will it be another party? One ideology, another ideology? Somehow or another, we can't get it together. Meanwhile, we're looking like a scrumptious meal to other nations that are looking at the great United States and saying they're falling apart. Perhaps it's our time yeah. 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 to take it all the way down. Yeah. Right. Off the muse when I hear the news. 
And I wonder, I wonder if some of these nations that have been looking up to the United States yep, yep. For, for centuries, for, for decades anyway, yeah. I wonder if they're thinking, well, we've been the little brother. Uh -huh. But maybe now that we have some nuclear weaponry, right. maybe instead of being the little brother, we join together. Uh -huh. And we link arms together. And while the great nation seems to be tearing itself apart, we take over. Can I remind you that this hasn't always been the strong power in the world? Can I remind you that at World War II's beginning, we had one of the worst military forces mm, okay. because we hadn't been concentrating on that. Uh -huh. all right, all right. Can I remind you that we had to start rationing? Yep. We had to start doing everything we could, turning car factories into military weaponry factories yeah. to get prepared to go over to fight Hitler and we needed help to do that. Yeah. Mm. All right. We're the strongest nation in the world. Might be. <laughs> What's my point in all of this? Oh when a nation is divided, yeah. when a nation is disobedient, it is inviting disaster. Yeah. And if anybody ought to understand that, it is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, the Lord knows how important it is to have a people that's obedient and united. Yeah. Listen to what he said in Psalm 133, verse 1. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together yeah. in unity. What did Jesus say? As I quoted earlier, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall his kingdom stand. Right. Then the Bible comes back and tells us no wonder God hates certain things. It's very rare you find in the Bible things that God specifically says I hate. One of them is divorce. He says I hate putting away. But what does America do? Every other day we work to put away. Every other minute we work to get out of it. Oh. That's where America is, regardless of what God says. I hate it, and we're suffering. Yes, sir. Our homes are suffering. Yeah. Our children are suffering. Amen. Because we won't be obedient, and we therefore become divided. Not only did God say, I hate that, but God said, I got a few other things I hate. Right, he said, there are seven things that are detestable. He says, holy eyes. Yeah. Folk go around thinking they're more than what they are. Yeah. Don't ever think you're better than what you are. That's right. Always think that somebody else is better than you. Right. Brown, you find it in the Bible? I think so. <laughs> Bible talks about esteem the other better yeah. than self. Uh, can I tell you, you can always, if you look hard enough, you can always find quality in another folk. Yeah, that's Another right. person, Amen. if you look hard enough, Amen. you find some quality there. And if you look and you're honest, you say, man, I'd like to have that be a part of me. Yeah, that's right. God says, I hate haughty eyes. The Lord says, I hate a, a lying tongue. Yeah. Well, I think we join God in that. Yeah. All right, all right. We hate lying tongues, don't we? Yeah. You don't sleep with folk. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about in the relational sense. You don't hang with folk that you know are just lying on you. Yeah. All right. Let me tell you, if they lie to you, they will lie yeah. on you. Yeah. God says, I hate that. I hate hands that are shedding innocent blood. God hates that. Yeah. God hates somebody taking a gun shotgun into a supermarket and killing innocent people just because he felt like it. God says, I hate a heart that devises wicked schemes. Uh, I hate that too, don't you? Yes. Folk plotting on you? God says, I hate it. I hate feet that are quick to rush in evil. 
He says, I hate a false witness who pours out lies. God says, I hate a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. Certain things God hates. Jermaine, to this lesson, one of the things God hates is those that are bringing about uh, division. And among Gideon's people, he had to deal with weakness because the entire nation wasn't together. You keep reading the book of Judges, you find the nation's tribes fighting among themselves. There were those that were going around, such as Abimelech, if you read a little bit further. And you know, he was good to sow division among his own people. Yes, you and I have to learn disobedience and division invites disaster. Unfortunately for you and me. Internal division is not one of the things we have to worry about as far as the devil is concerned. We never have to worry about the devil having his kingdom divided. He doesn't have his divided. You don't have the demons with with, with, with Satan and his angels. They're not divided. They are united in one thing, destroying the church. They're united. Now why in the world we want to help them? That's right. You don't want to help the devil destroy God's work. Yeah. He will always be out to destroy God's work. We cannot possibly be about the business of building faith, family, and community if we are too busy about the business of taking one another apart. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 beginning at verse 13, for you brethren have been called to liberty but don't use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh but through love serve one another for the law is fulfilled with one word you shall love your neighbor as yourself but if you bite and devour one another beware lest you be consumed by one another that's called Christian cannibalism you know what the church needs get them on a vegetarian diet don't eat one another up Don't eat one another up. Because if we are divided, we invite disaster. We must realize, like Israel, that we are weaker when we aren't together. And so remember, there is not strength in number. There is strength in a united number. Let me run that back again. (laughs) And not strength in number. There is strength in a united number. And when we are united, it doesn't matter how much number we have. It'll fall apart. And so we learn from this episode of Israel at its inception that the people of God were divided because they were disobedient and because of that one tribe set out on its own hiding in caves because they couldn't fight the Amalekites they couldn't fight the Midianites and Midian driven by Satan said I will take over Israel here these people are in a mess because they couldn't seem to get it together. Church, let's never be like that. You start seeing uh, disobedience, speak to it. You you start seeing divisiveness, get in there and put some glue in there to hold it together. You start hearing stuff that's going to be divisive in the mission of God, you need to put a plug in it and don't take scissors and make it worse. Then there's another lesson from the story of Gideon. I need to tell you that this lesson is a little bit more encouraging in a different sense. That lesson is that God sees us like no one else does. If you read the story, you know that Gideon was doing some work. And as the text tells us, he is threshing wheat. But he's doing it in an odd place. He's in the wine press. Why is he doing this in the wine press? Because he was fearful of the enemy coming through like locusts and taking away what he was working on. 
This is akin to you and me cooking hamburgers on the grill in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Why in the closet? And somebody may come through outside uh -oh. and take it from me. Yeah. Gideon is threshing wheat, but he's in the wine press. Yeah. He's hiding in the cut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's afraid. Afraid. Afraid like the rest of those folks. Yes. Had they been united, they didn't need to be afraid. Right. Had, had they had an idea of a united spirit, they wouldn't have been hiding, but he hiding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Note that God came to Gideon, if you notice the text. And he came to Gideon with an approach that is really unexplainable except for divine glasses. Right. Mm. God came to him and he said to the angel, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Uh -huh. Well, called him a mighty man of valor. Right. This is an interesting statement because it would take a strong man to go against his family's face, a uh, false faith system right. and turn them to the God of heaven. All right. But Gideon wasn't strong. Right. All right. This is an interesting statement God made to him through the angel. Right. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Mm. It would take a courageous man to fight the Midianite army and to lead Israel to victory. But Gideon wasn't courageous. No, mm. He's hiding in the closet. Right, all right. He's threshing in the wine press. Yeah. And yet God sent an angel to this coward uh -huh. who's hiding in the corner and says, the Lord is with you, yeah. you mighty man of valor. Uh -huh. I'm here to tell you that God saw what Gideon could be made out to be. Yeah. Even when Gideon didn't see it himself. That's good. That's good. Gideon was anything but a mighty warrior when God found him. Yeah. You see, God gave him instruction. All right. God said your parents and your family have a false faith system. Yes, sir. Yeah. I want you to go and tear down their false faith system. Yes, tear down their idol worship. Get rid of all of that stuff. Tear it down. Tear down their altar to Baal. Yeah. Gideon did it. Yes, sir. But he sneaked around at night. At night. Yes, sir. Yeah. You see, you can do stuff in the dark. Nobody see you. That's right. Or at least that's what we think. Yeah. God said, tear down that false worship. And Gideon said, okay. <laughs> and he waited till it got dark. Yeah. Then he yeah. tore it down yeah. and went to hide again. Yeah. Yeah. He tore it down and went in hiding. The folk came out the next day. Who tore off this church? Oh, <laughs> And Gideon didn't step up and say, it was me. All right, all right. Oh no, folk told on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was hiding. Bring him out. <laughs> he wasn't a brave man. No, he wasn't. He was anything but a mighty warrior. Yeah, that's right. Here's another example that shows his cowardice. He asked the Lord for clear signs of victory yeah. before he would move forward. Yeah. Lord, if it's really you, I'm going to leave this fleece out. I want you to keep everything dry but the fleece. God said, all right. Then he said, well, that's pretty good. But, but give me one more proof. Yeah. Sound like some of us. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna leave this fleece out. Let everything else be wet, but the fleece dry. Right. What is it? God said, "All right." Um, yeah. And then Gideon thought he was ready to battle, but then the Lord had to say, "I know you're still a coward. <laughs> I know you're still a coward. Yeah. I know you still don't believe it." Right. Tell you what, go down and listen to the talk. Yes, yeah. sir. In the Midianite camp. All right. Ooh, if you didn't read this story, you missed a whole lot. Yeah. Go listen to the talk down there, yeah. Gideon. Don't go fight them. Just go hang out and listen. Yeah. And Gideon did the same. He would get a sneaking. 
Uh-huh. He sneaked down to the camp Come on, man. and he listened yeah. and he heard them saying what tantamount was, you know what, Gideon's going to whoop us tomorrow. Uh-huh. And then he went back, but he had to ask the Lord over and over and over again for a sign that he would win the battle. And yet, despite these lapses in courage, God delivered the Midianites into the hand of Gideon. Yeah. He took a coward and made him a powerful man. Yeah. God saw in Gideon what Gideon didn't see in himself. Yeah. Often, we can't see what God can do with us because we are too focused on what we can't do ourselves. God wants to do something great with you. He wants to do something in your life that if you would only trust him, right. if I would only trust him, we would see that what we see in the mirror is not what God sees in the mirror. Yeah. Yes, Told you before, it's easy to count the amount of seeds in an apple. Uh-huh. But can you count the amount of trees in an apple seed? You and I can't seem to do that. All right. God can do that. Yeah. God sees the trees in the apple seed. We're too busy looking at the seeds. Yes, sir. Say, I only count five seeds in this core. Mm. God is saying, no, what you're missing is a forest and each one of those seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. We look at ourselves and say, I don't have much to work with. Uh-huh. And I don't have a lot of Courage and fortitude. Yeah. God is saying, who made your mouth? Yeah. Well, well. <laughs> who made your hands? Yeah. Who made you this, that, or the other? Often we look at our physical attributes and we come away discouraged thinking that we can't do much. But who made you who you are? Yeah. 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 Mom and dad. No, no. no. You might have that big nose. <laughs> you might have their slew feet. Yeah. All right, guys. But God made you yeah. who you are. Yeah. I've told you all a thousand times that, you know, I was hoping to be six foot six. Right, guys. Big, big, broad Dallas cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> Lord said, well, I'm glad you think that. <laughs> but I got something else in mind. Yeah. 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 Lord said, I got in mind. I don't mean God talked to me. I'm talking about you come to see it through experience. Nice. Uh, Lord showed me, well, your goal uh, wasn't uh, getting the last four yards. Yeah. <laughs> four yards out from the, gal- t- uh, the goal line. That, that's not your goal. That's not what I haven't planned for you. Amen. See, I was too busy looking at image. Yeah. Well, well. Well, more directly, back in the day, Calvin Hill looking at us. Uh, I want to do that. God said, Well, I didn't put you in that line. <laughs> put you in another line. Yes, sir. Yeah. Same thing for you. Yeah. Some of you had in mind something altogether different for your life. That's right. That's right. God had another plan. Yeah. Well. Can I remind you that his plan better than yours? Uh-huh. Another plan. Yeah. Get in I'm going to kick on, keep on cooking in the closet, so to speak. Uh-huh. God said, oh no. More people need to eat. Yeah. And you're going to suffocate in the closet. Right. Come on now. And so God saw him in a different way. Yeah. We don't often think we can do the things that Gideon had to learn. Right. Gideon had to turn his family from false religion. Uh-huh. Some of you got folk in your family. Yeah, All right. Yeah. That ain't false religion. Yes, sir. Right. You know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, Some of you got people in your family who don't know the saving power of the Savior Jesus. Yeah. Right. Amen. They following all kinds of isms That's right. and isms. Yeah. They following all types of foolishness. Right. Yeah. And here you know the truth, but you don't want to say anything. I don't think I can say anything. We must remember that through prayer, patience, 
presentation, yeah. preparation, yeah. and perseverance, right, right. God can use us to win over even the most obstinate relative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. What do you mean by presentation, Brown? Yeah. Well, presentation is you, the salvation got to be seen in you and me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We got them on family reunion time. Some of you are saying, oh, Lord. <laughs> Family reunion can be an interesting time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had those two coolers. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. They got the one with the seven up. Yeah. Yeah. Sprite and the Pepsi. Yeah. Coca-Cola, lemonade. Yeah. Have a little vitamin water. Yeah. The Sony. Yeah. Got all that in that cooler. Yeah. Yeah. You ever notice that cooler doesn't have a big line at it? A no. certain time, they look at the time, it's getting a little, little evening. Yes, sir. Turn the music up a little louder. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Somebody slide out the second cooler. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You, you know what's in there? Johnny hanging in there. Yeah. Walking all around that cooler. Yeah. Little Bacardi in there. Yeah. Dirty room. Yeah. Oh, nobody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Spritzer. Yeah. Little hen. Yeah. Boom farm. Yeah. Mad dog up in there. Little coat. Yeah. All that stuff up in there. Yeah, Jackie, yeah. And we look and say, well, that's the other cooler. Yeah. I know nobody's ever been in the other cooler. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> You know as well as do I, as well as your liver. Uh -huh. <laughs> you had a little time in the other cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to come out with a word about Jesus because they saw you when you had your hand in at the same time they did. Yeah. 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 So we have to have presentation. Yes, sir. We got to show folks this Jesus stuff works. Yes, sir. Yeah. We got to show folks, look, I once was blind. But now I see. Yeah. We got to show folk that Jesus makes a difference. And when we concentrate on a pure life, on learning more about the Lord ourselves, and on humbly taking advantage of every opportunity to talk about Jesus, the Lord will take our meager effort, our weakness and frailness, and bring somebody to the cross. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Even though you thought. Mm. You couldn't do it. Come on. All right, all right. See, we got to understand, this is a divine human effort. Yes, it is. No, purely by yourself, you can't do it. Come on. Not by yourself. That's right, brother. God wants willing clay. Yeah. Amen. That he can put on the table Preach, and mold it and shape it yeah. like the master potter. Yes, and after he finishes it, he paints it up with the blood of Jesus. And he uses us to bless other people. That's right. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and the Lord wants to use you. You may not be a mighty man or woman of valor right now. Often we are hesitant to move forward with our ideas and thoughts for the kingdom. That's right. Because we are worried about the people who will be against us. Yes. Let me tell you something. You can't leave the church if you're afraid of folk. That's right. That's right. You just can't do it. Right. Can't leave the church if you're afraid and you got to bend to the will of the folk. Uh -huh. Church getting quiet. Yeah. Brown, you arrogant. No. no. I'm just making a statement. Yeah. You can't do it. That's right. You have to have an attitude of no. It's got to be God's will. Yeah. Yeah. Folk may not like it. But it's got to be God's will. Amen, amen. Got to have the attitude that it's not about me. It's about him. And we've got to lead after God's will. Yeah. Yeah. Shepherd can't ask the sheep, which way you want to go? Yeah. Say that, Doc. No, it has to lead. Yeah. Have to have an attitude not of arrogance, That's right. but of dependence on the word and the Lord yeah. to lead in the ways of God yes, with a humble spirit. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at this whole idea of some of us. I don't want to lead in the Lord's work because somebody might say something, but well, they're already saying something. Yeah. They said something the day you decided to give your life to Jesus. Come on, man. Folk in Trenton still talk about me. Come on. I've been baptized so many years ago, I can't even remember. Folks still talking about it. That's 
Sorry. You can't quit because the folk talk. Get in. I don't want to get out there and destroy this false religion. Folk may talk. They're already talking. Been talking. Every time you turn around, somebody got the mouth open. You got to lead in the ways of God. You got to follow in God's ways. You got to have an attitude that's not fearful of people. Let me bring a little humor in here without going all the way. Some of y'all remember Bernie Mac? Yeah. Y'all remember Bernie came out on stage? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't afraid of. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Go home and ask somebody at home, they tell you. <laughs> Gotta have an attitude. I'm not afraid so long as I'm standing on the word. Yeah. yeah. So, even comes to a new congregation like that. It's still a new congregation. You gotta stop fearing what folk gonna say. Yes. We ask all the time, we need people to get in and roll the sleeves up and do this, that, and the other. And I can do it, but I'm, 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 I'm afraid. Yeah. If I do this, somebody gonna say, I'm trying to, if they're gonna talk anyway. Yeah. All right, all right. They're going to talk if you do. They're going to talk if you don't. Amen. Amen. So you might as well have folk talk about you while you're trying to do the right thing. Amen. Amen. Just focus on the idea that God wants to use you for his glory and not your own. That's right. Mm -hmm. I want to preach. Yeah, but why? All right. Why? All right, well, I want people to see me. Uh, well, well, Nobody want to see you. <laughs> mm. Some of y'all watch that old Temptation TV show. Right. Oh, David, David Ruffin said, eh, nobody come to see you, Otis. <laughs> Ask somebody at home, they'll explain it to you. It's not about you or me. Oh, Need to see God. Yeah. Yeah. We have very talented women in this church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. I say that, I mean it. I thank God for you. Yes. You got gift and ability. Yes. And don't let folk talk you down yes. from using it. Mm -hmm. We got these different activities we could be doing. Mm -hmm. Women got skills, yes. smarts, yes. and ability. Yes. Get up and go. Yes. Health. Yes. Brother Brown, I would like to lead this particular thing because I think it will, it will catch folk uh, on the periphery and it can give us an opportunity to win them to Jesus. You don't have to worry about me saying no. Come on, man. Go for it. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Only time you hear me say no if you come up with attitude because I want to shine. Uh -huh. Come on now. Yeah, I'm going to say walk on by. Yeah, yeah. Not about shining yes, sir. on ourselves. Somewhere I read, let your good works be seen that men might see them and shine God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Not you. That's right, Amen. And so God sees us differently than we see ourselves. That's right. That's right. When you go home today, take self-inventory. Come but don't say, I can't do this for the Lord because I just don't have it. Yeah. God sees you differently yeah. okay. than you see yourself. Yes, then let me give you one more. I hope y'all all right. Yeah. I'm going to drop one more and then I'll be done. Right. I'm going to hit it and I'm going to quit it. <laughs> but I mean that in the right James Brown way. The third thing we pick up from the story of Gideon is it doesn't take a large number to win the battle. All right, right. All right. Gideon got geared to fight the yeah. Midianites. He got 32,000 soldiers. That's a lot of soldiers. Right. He grabbed them together. Now, mind you, the enemy was still more outnumbering. I think it was 135,000 than the enemy. Yeah. So he had, he, he had 32,000. He's still looking a little rough. Yeah. And he probably thought, well, I, I guess God's still going to do this. Only, we only got 32,000, but right. we're going to go anyway. Right. Now, that took courage in itself. Yeah. Yeah. But God saw something. God said, I tell you what. I want you to follow these processes I'm going to tell you. Uh -huh. Take the guys yeah. that are afraid and missing home. Yeah. Tell them to go back home. All right. Yeah. All right. 
And don't you know a huge number of those cats yes, sir. walked on out? Yes, sir. Yeah, did. Then God says, go down to the river. Yeah. How the guys get some water? The guys that lap and the guys that grab it from the, check them out. Yeah. <laughs> and as you read the story, it got down from 32,000 to 300 people. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And God said, now you thought 32,000 versus 135,000 was a mismatch. Yeah. <laughs> I got you down to 300. Yeah. I got Sammy Davis Jr. about to fight Muhammad Ali in his prime. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's the root I'm going to get you to win this battle with. Yeah, come on. Now, can you imagine being in that army? When he said, oh, y'all guys want to go home, go home. I said, hey, wait a minute, man. <laughs> we need you here. He rolled on out. Yeah. And then the other one, 300 people. All right. And God said, with this amount, I'm going to show you who I am. Right. Yeah. God did not want the people to think that they were winning the battle Amen. by their own hand. Exactly. He wanted them to know that the battle, as they say, is not yours. Amen. It is the Lord's. Yeah. There are times in our lives when God has to bring this point home to each and every one of us. Gideon was able to win the battle with 300 empowered by God, favored by God. Because God wanted them to know, I am the warrior God for you. And for you and me, God has to remind us that he's the one who is in charge, yeah. not us. He may send lean times to us Amen. so that we will learn to have more faith in him than we do our jobs. Amen. Come on now. Yes, sir. I looked at my investments the other day. It hurt my heart. Well, well. I did the Fred Sanford. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was the big one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least I thought. But then I remember. Come on, Mike. Come on. They say the market will bounce back. Come on, yeah. But even if it doesn't, yes, God did not leave heaven. Yeah. And his storehouse is still wide open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. I had to remember I was eating well even when I wasn't making hardly any money. Never skipped a meal. I was eating even when I went to the ATM back in the days. In the 80s. And did the do-do-do-do. And check balance. And machine laughed. Yeah, we were always able to get diapers. Similac, yeah. Gerber, yeah. some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We made it work. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, God. Talking to my children the other day, I was in D.C. talking to two of my children. Mm-hmm. And we were laughing about the days of, they had a place in Pennsylvania back in the day yeah. called Murray Steakhouse. All right. mm-hmm. It was a place you could buy bulk of supposedly good food. Uh-huh. Man, I don't know what we were eating. Uh-huh. It says steak. <laughs> Man, I remember some missing dogs in the neighborhood. <laughs> Chicken. Yeah. You never know. Not many squirrels around. <laughs> but it was cheap. Oh, oh, you know you've been there too. Yeah. Give me that look like, well, I've never had that. You ought to quit. You ought to quit. You time you were scraping two nickels together hoping for a genie. Come on, man. And so even in times that are lean, God says, I'm doing it to show you. Right. Co- Costco ain't taking care of you. No. Right. Kroger, Publix, Walmart. I'm the one taking care of you. He may allow us to have ill health mm-hmm. so that we can come to see that without him, yes, yes. the best doctors in the world and the best insurance in the world don't mean a thing. Mm. 
God will let that happen to you. Lord, I got this going on and I thought I was doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, God sometimes will let that cancer jump on you. Yes, sir. He might let that heart problem. Yeah. Well, well. He might get you to the point where you and I don't feel we're going to make it. And yet he has to do that to prove to us we never did make it on our own. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here we are. Well, I'm, I'm so worried about tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You didn't, never did know what was going to happen tomorrow. Say that. Come on, man. Jesus said it this way. What are you worried about tomorrow for? It's got enough trouble today. I'm here today, tomorrow, and yesterday. You see life linearly. I see it all at one time. <laughs> and I've been to your funeral before you were born. I got it all in my hands. So if I got it all in my hands and I love you in spite of you, what are you worried about? Why are you worried? You're going around, I'm scared to death. I got this. I'm here. Gideon, 300. That's all you need. You don't even need them. Come on now. I can whoop them with just you. Yes, sir. Right. Check that. I can whoop them without you. Yeah. I don't need you. Yeah. But I got to prove something yeah. to you. Amen. It doesn't take a huge army to win the victory. That's right. Amen. Well, let me conclude with an application. It doesn't take a large church number of members mm. to do something for Jesus. Yeah. That's good. Right. That's good. Can you let me take you for just a moment through our history here? Yeah. All right, man. We're in our 14th year. All right. You've heard this before, but I like to keep it in your mind. Uh -huh. Seven people. Right. Couldn't get enough money to buy a popsicle. Well, well. As far as getting funding is concerned. <laughs> just couldn't do it. Yes, sir. Bank looked at us and said, ha! Ah! <laughs> and all we wanted to do was fix a broke down room. Uh -huh. mm. And as you heard recently, blessed in such a mighty way yeah. to where now, you know, on the precipice of something great for the Lord. Amen. Not for me, All right. but for the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Brown, don't you want to be for you? Look, there are so many other things that I could be doing. Yeah, come on. Now. Come on. To try to be great, uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. to speak. Say that. Say in that. the secular world. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's not about glory. No, sir. Yeah. And I have to say this, some folks just can't get it. Come on now. It's not about glory. That's right. For neither one of these brothers, it's not about glory. Right. This is an opportunity to do something that will bless people. Right. And I feel responsible to use what God gave me to use. Right. Yes, sir. And so do they. Mm -hmm. But we can be doing some other stuff. Come on, man. Come on. Thank God we've been blessed to do this. Yeah. And, 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 and it's amazing that here we are on the, the precipice mm -hmm. of just another major level. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about 300 people. Mm. No. Come on, say that. No, Michael. Not at all. No, yes, sir. sir. We're not talking about huge numbers. Uh -huh. Small numbers. Yeah. All right, all right. And since I'm here, let me step a little further. Small numbers and even smaller numbers of dependable dollars. Yeah. Now what I said. And God is still blessing. Over and over and over again. You don't need 5,000 to do something great for the Lord. Just a few dedicated, faithful people. Yeah. And boy, what you can do for the Lord. You can move mountains, as the brother said. Yes, sir. With just a few dedicated people. Yeah. What every congregation needs is committed members. Yeah. Committed families. Right. And the church will be built up 
and the church will grow. Yes. While others sit back and say, we can't do anything until we have much, much larger numbers. There are other instances of God's people with even smaller numbers still going forward for the Lord. Amen. We got to be in that number. Yes, sir. And we'll keep on going for the Lord. And so as we close this message today, I want you to see from Gideon, remember that disunity brings disaster. Mm -hmm. Church, do your best Amen. to keep a spirit of unity. Yes, do your best to do it. Amen. And whenever you see anything that's looking like it's a fracture, yes. deal with it with a loving heart. Right. Amen. Amen. We ain't got time for this foolishness. No, sir. That's right. Cut that mess out. Yeah. We got to go forward. Amen. Do it in your family. Uh -huh. Do it in the church family. Yes, sir. And then secondly, God sees you better than anybody else does. Amen. Even you. Amen. You look in the mirror spiritually, you don't like what you see? You say, I, I, I'm just so far away from being used by God. No, you're not. Mm. All, right. All you got to do is yield to him. That's right. That's right. And he'll do for you and in you and show you something that you never thought was there. Amen. And then lastly, it doesn't take a huge army to win a huge victory. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad that's the case because Jesus stood alone yes, sir. when he had to face the devil on the cross. Yeah, on. Jesus stood alone in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes, he stood alone while he prayed. His disciples went to sleep. Yes, he stood alone when he was facing that agony. He stood alone when he faced the doubt. He was alone when he said, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? But he knew that God was still there. And so he took the death. And he went to the grave. And he got up on that Sunday morning. Said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go and preach this gospel. Amen. I'm glad to tell you today that that same gospel, which declares that same forgiving blood of Jesus Christ, cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, is available right here and right now for you. Yeah. If you've never been to the water yeah. to be baptized for the remission, the forgiveness, the cleansing of your sins, yeah. there's no better day than today. Yeah. Oh, that water is ready. It might be cool, and you might like that today. <laughs> might be a little lukewarm, and that's all right. Yeah. Might find a bug or two on the top. That's okay. Don't worry about all of that. Just get on in the water. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll bury you in that water. That's what you do with something dead. You come out of that water, and every sin you've ever thought about yes, will be washed away. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, city reclamation projects that try to wipe off graffiti can't do it better than Jesus. Oh, Comet can't cleanse better than Jesus. You can use arm and hammer detergent tied with the pot or the liquid or the powder and you can't out clean Jesus. You'll be added to the church of Christ. You'll have the Holy Spirit. You'll be a part of the congregation. And together we do great things for the Lord. Stand up on your feet. We're going to sing one verse of a song to encourage your baptism today. If you want to come, we beg you to come right now as we sing.